Right, The Ballad of Red in Gel by Oscar Wilde. Before I um, recite some of it, it goes on for pages, I'm just going to take out um, a section which is um, a bit about the governor. Um, so here we go. Some kill their love when they are young and some when they are old. Some strangle with the hands of love, some with the hands of gold. The kindest use a knife because the dead soon grow cold. Yet each man kills the thing he loves, but each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Some love too little, some too long, some sell and others buy. Some do the deed with many tears, and some without a sigh. For each man kills the thing he loves, yet each man does not die. He does not die a death of shame on a day of dark disgrace, nor have a noose about his neck, nor a cloth upon his face, nor drop feet foremost through the ground into an empty place. He does not sit with silent men who watch him night and day, who watch him when he tries to weep and when he tries to pray, who watch him lest himself should rob the prison of its prey. He does not wake at dawn to see the dread figures throng his room, the shivering chaplain robed in white, the sheriff stern with gloom, and the governor all in shiny black with the face, with the yellow face of doom. He does not rise in piteous haste to put on convict clothes while some coarse-mouthed doctor gloats and notes each new and nerve-twitched pose, fingering a watch whose little ticks are like horrible hammer blows. He does not know that sickening thirst that sands one's throat before the hangman with his gardener's gloves slips through the padded door and binds one of the three leather throngs that the throat may thirst no more. He does not bend his head to hear the burial office read the while the terror of his soul tells him he's not dead. Cross his own coffin as he moves into the hideous shed. Six weeks our guardsman walked the yard in a suit of shabby grey. His cricket cap was on his head and his step seemed light and gay. But I never saw a man who looked so wistfully at the day. So that's um, a, a little... A bit. I'm just scanning through now to see. I think there's a little bit more at another point about the governor as well. Um, but this is obviously about a condemned man and facing death at the hands of the, um, you know, the hangman. I found a little bit more here. It's part three of um, Oscar Wilde's Redding, Ballad of Reading Jail. In Deptor's yard the stones are hard and the dripping wall is high, so it was there he took the air beneath the leaden sky, and by each side a warden walked for fear the man might die. Or else he sat with those who watched his anguish night and day, who watched him when he rose to weep and when he crouched to pray, who watched him lest he should rob their scaffold of its prey. The governor was strong upon the Regulations Act. The doctor said that death was but a scientific fact. And twice a day the chaplain called and left a little tract. And twice a day he smoked his pipe and drank his quart of beer. His soul was resolute and held no hiding place for fear. He often said that he was glad the hangman's hands were near. But why he said so strange a thing no warden dared to ask. For he to whom a watcher's doom is given as his task must set a lock upon his lips and make his face a mask. It's a little bit more of it. So um, they refer to the, the governor as the yellow face of doom and strict on regulations. So I thought um, that governor is actually Henry Bevan Isaacson. It would take quite a, a lot of tape to read the whole of this um, 
this ballad, but it is it is quite good. I mean, it goes on for you know tw twenty odd pages of A4, or, or as I've just picked out a few bits and pieces here. Um, so ob obviously the governor Bev um, Henry Bevan Isaacson had made an effect on um, Oscar Wilde. It is a bit from part four. There is no chapel on the day on which they hang a man. The chaplain's heart is far too sick, or his face is far too wan. Or there is that written in his eyes which none should look upon. So they kept us close till nigh on noon, and then they rang the bell, and the warders with their jingly kings opened each listening cell. And down the iron stair we tramped, each from his separate hell. Out into God's sweet air we went, but not in wanted way, for this man's face was white with fear, and that man's face was grey. I never saw sad men who looked so wistfully at the day. I never saw sad men who looked with such a wistful eye upon that little tent of blue we prisoners called the sky, and at every careless cloud that passed in freedom by. But there, there were those amongst us all who walked with downcast head and knew that had each got his due, they should have died instead. He had but killed a thing that lived whilst they had killed the dead. For he who sins a second time wakes a dead soul to pain and draws it from its spotted shroud and makes it bleed again and makes it bleed great gouts of blood and makes it bleed in vain. Yeah, so, so I thought I'd just put a bit of it in. It would be nice to read the whole lot so it flowed. I don't even know if I'm reading it properly, actually. But um, I thought it was mainly to mention the yellow face of doom and the warden in despair and that sort of thing. Um, I'm just going through it now. I haven't organised this very well, but I wanted to do it... Uh, um, This is part six. In Reading Jail by Reading Town there is a pit of shame, and in it lies a wretched man eaten by teeth of flame. In burning winding sheets he lies, and his grave has got no name. And there till Christ call forth the dead, in silence let him lie. No need to waste the foolish tear or heave the windy sigh. The man had killed the thing he loved, and so he had to die. But all men kill the thing they love, by all let this be heard, some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. So I've got more information about Oscar Wilde's writings, but I just thought I'd put that little bit on there. So this is Sheila, this is um, November 2007 inspired by re the remembrance of that tape I did 30 years ago when I first visited Reading Jail as a student doing a project on education in prisons and later, th many years later, discovering that the governor of Reading Jail was actually a descendant of a common ancestor, an Isaacson and I can't remember how far removed a cousin but um, I mean, I think the common ancestor is um, Marcia Rogers. It could be a William or a Stephen Isaacs, and I can't remember offhand without looking. But anyway, that's just a little bit of um, information about um, Reading Gel. Over and out. <laughs>